building quizzes, surveys, and questionnaires, whether to test knowledge on any topic or collect answers, is extremely common and useful. In a previous tutorial, I shared an Excel quiz used to test the Excel level for candidates applying for a job. It consists of 40 multiple choice questions. The quiz can be marked with a click and reveal the score and rating of the candidate. You can download that file and take the quiz at your convenience by clicking on the link in the description below. I am Nabil Murad. In this intense tutorial, I show you how to build this quiz or any similar project from ground up in Excel. We'll be combining lots of functionalities in this project, such as data validation, functions, conditional formatting, charts, macros, protection, and much more. It's a power-packed recipe full of Excel vitamins and minerals, so let's dive in. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video. In this project, I'm going to create a multiple choice general knowledge quiz. You can apply the same concept and the same steps for any topic you like. In this quiz, like the Excel quiz I created before, I have 40 questions and for each question, I have four possible options that will appear in a drop list. I got these questions and answers from a website, and this website is available in the same worksheet. You can check the website for a lot more questions. This is from where I got all the questions and all the options for this project. What I did in this starting file is that I wrote the 40 questions. Here are the 40 questions in column B, and then I have four options for each question. Then I have in column G, H, I, J, the four options that will appear in a drop list. I skip column K, and in column L, I'm writing the single correct answer out of the four options. I'm writing it in column L. This is all what I did in this file, and now I'm going to start the first step of this project by creating a drop list in cell D2. So I'm selecting cell D2, and to create a drop list, I go to the data tab of the ribbon, and to the right side of the data tab, I click on data validation. The data validation dialog box opens. I click on the down pointing arrow for allow, and I select a list. I put my cursor in the source box, and I select the four options that will appear in the drop list. So I click and drag to select the four options. By default, when you click and drag, these options are locked. So I want to unlock them. I want to use relative cell reference. So I'm going to hit the F4 key three times. And now I have from G2 to J2, these are relative cell references. And then I hit OK. Once I have done that, I would have created my first drop list. So I can click on the down pointing arrow and see the different options from the drop list. These four options are the options from which the user will be selecting an answer. So according to the question and the type of quiz you are creating or the survey or questionnaire, then you will be providing the different options. Now, because I'm using relative cell reference, I can simply hover over the lower right corner, the autofill handle, and I drag it all the way to the last question. I don't want to copy the formatting, so I'm going to click on the little options tag and select fill without formatting. Now I would have created different drop lists showing the different options for each question. My next step will be creating a function that returns a one if the user selects the correct answer and it returns a zero if the user selects a wrong answer. And because I have in column L the correct answer out of the four options, then I'm going to create in column F, starting from cell F2, I'm going to create an if function. So I'll be typing equal if, and then I hit tab. 
if the option selected in cell D2 equals the option I pre-specified in cell L2, then in this case I need a 1, otherwise I need a 0, and I close the bracket, and I hit enter. I didn't select anything yet, and I have a 0, but there is a third option. If the user didn't select anything, I don't want to see anything in column F, so I'm going to put it in the edit mode one more time and say if D2 is blank, so I'm going to wrap my first if function in a second if function by saying if D2 equals blank, double quote, double quote, then in this case, I don't want anything. The user didn't select anything yet and then I hit comma. Otherwise, I want my if function. Don't forget to close the bracket for the second if function. I hit enter and because I didn't select anything, then I don't see anything in column F, but let's select the wrong answer. So if I click on the down pointing arrow and then I select the wrong answer, I get a zero. Now let's select the correct answer. By the way, I didn't know these questions and the answers. I just got them from the website. I know that this is the correct answer and that's why it's returning one. Now I can copy my if function all the way down. I select F2 and then I double click and send it down and I would have copied it all the way down. Let me select the last cell and check. I'm looking at the formula bar and that's correct. And that was the second step in my project. My next step will be creating in column D some conditional formatting rules. So if the user picks up the correct answer, I want the color of the cell to turn green. If the user picks up a wrong answer, I want it to turn red. And if the user doesn't select anything at all, I don't want to see any fill color in the cell. To be able to turn on and off the conditional formatting with a macro, then I need to have two conditions. The first condition will be the value returned in column F. So I want to turn it green if in column F I have number one. And I want to turn it red if I have zero. That's one condition, the value coming from column F. But the second condition will be a number in a far distant cell that the user will never find. So I'm going to jump to the last cell in the first row. This is cell XFD1. And then I hit enter and I'll be typing one. Later on, I'll be hiding this column. If I have XFD1 in this cell, I want the conditional formatting rule to pop up. If I don't have number one, if it's blank, then I don't want the conditional formatting to work. Let's go back. I'm going to hit Control Home and start by selecting the range in column D, starting from D2 to D41 for the 40 questions. To create a conditional formatting rule, I go to the Home tab, click on conditional formatting, and then I want to select a new rule. I'll be using a formula, and I put my blinking cursor in the formula box. My first rule will be looking at cell F2. If it is blank, then I don't want any fill color, and that's very simple. So from the perspective of the active cell, I'm going to click on cell F2, and I say if F2 is blank, but here F2 is locked, so I want to unlock it and make it a relative cell reference by hitting F4 three times, and I type if it is equal, double quote, double quote, which means blank, then what would you like to do for the formatting? I click on format, I go to fill color, and I select no color, and then I hit OK, and another OK, and I would have created my first conditional formatting rule. Conditional formatting rule number two, for the same range from D2 to D41. It is already selected, so I click on conditional formatting, new rule, and then I'm using a formula. This time, I'm going to specify two conditions, and I'll wrap them in an end function. I put my blinking cursor in the box for creating a formula, and I type equal end, and I open bracket, and I say, if F2, 
and I hit F4 three times to unlock it, equals zero, and then comma, that was my very first condition, that's my first logical test, and then XFD1 equals one, this one should be locked, so I go to the very end, XFD1 equals one, and I close the bracket. These are my two conditions, a floating condition in F2 that will change as I copy down, and the static condition in XFD1 that is an absolute reference. If it is equal one, then I would like to format. I click on format, and then I go to the fill color, and I'll be selecting, let's say, a light red color. I click on more colors, click on custom, and I want to drag the color up so as to select a light color. I hit OK, and another OK, and a third OK, and I would have created my second conditional formatting rule. I hit Control Home to go back, and then now I'll be selecting the same range from D2 to D41 one last time. To create the third rule, I click on Conditional Formatting, New Rule, Use formula, I put my blinking cursor and I type equal and, and I open bracket. If the value in F2, and I unlock it, F4 three times, this time if it is equal one, comma, control right arrow, if the value in XFD1 equals one, if both conditions are met, then I need a green color. So I click on Format, and here I'll be selecting a green color, and I hit OK, and now I can go back and test. Control Home, and automatically, as you can see, because I'm selecting the correct answer, and because F2 has one, and because XFD1 also has one, then I'm getting the green color. Let me select an option for the second question, and obviously, my answer was incorrect to that question, and I get a zero in column F, although I have XFD1, I have number one, but because only one condition is met, then I'm getting the red color. What if I delete the contents of one of these cells? I'm going to select both of them and hit the delete key. Now I don't see any fill color, and that was the first conditional formatting rule. For my next step, I would like to create some calculations to count how many correct answers I got and calculate my score out of 40. So in order to do this, I want to bring all the correct answers or most of the answers in column D. And to make it easier for me, I'm just going to copy the correct answers from column L. So I select the first value in cell L2. Control shift down arrow, and then I'm copying Control C, and I want to paste the values in column D. So I go back to column D, select cell D2. I just want to paste the values because I don't want to lose my drop list, so I'll be pasting values either by clicking on the down pointing arrow of Paste Special and select the leftmost option in the third row or by using the shortcut Alt-ESV. After pasting the values and look at my conditional formatting, it's popping up automatically. I'm going to change some of the answers to select intentionally some wrong answers. By the way, I'm also checking my conditional formatting rule. Remember that it's also tied up to cell XFD1, which has the value of one right now. Whenever I have a wrong answer, I get a zero. Whenever I have a correct answer, I got a one. The total is 40 because I have 40 questions and I would like to create some calculations in my preparation area to the right side. This preparation area, starting in column X, will be hidden later on when I finalize my project. The first calculation will be created in X1. That simply is some function summing the values in column F. So I'll be typing equal sum, and then I hit tab. What would you like to sum? I want to sum all the numbers in column F. I select the first value, control shift down arrow, 
And then I don't want to lock anything, so I hit Control Backspace to jump to my function. I close the bracket, and here I'm getting the total. The font color was set to gray. I'm going to change it to black so that I can see better. So my score is 36. In cell Y1, I want my score out of 40, so I'll be typing equal sign, click on X1, type an ampersand, shift 7 on your keyboard, and then in double quotation, I'll be typing forward slash 40, and then close the double quotation. When I hit enter, then it's 36 out of 40. Now I want to create the label that I'll be using for displaying the result, and this label will read the text, your score is 36 out of 40, so I just need to join the contents together. I'm selecting Z1, and in Z1 I'll be typing equal, in double quotation, I'll be typing your score is, followed by a space, and then I close the double quotation, and end symbol, and I'll be pasting the contents of cell Y1. When I hit enter, now look at that. It says your score is 36 out of 40. Well, if you want to read the text instead, you can do that instead of the forward slash, but what I want to do is to split it into two lines. So I'm going to put it in the edit mode one more time, F2 to put it in the edit mode. And before the Y1, I want the character 10 function, which pushes whatever comes next to a new line. So I'll be typing C-H-A-R. I open bracket, I type 10 and I close the bracket, then a second ampersand. I hit enter, your score is 36 out of 40. Now it doesn't look like it's on two lines, but when I put it in a text box, it will appear on two lines. I also want to rate the result based upon the number returned by the sum function in cell X1. And to do that, I created a little array which showed the score and the rating. If you score anything between zero and 10, that's fair. If you score between 10 and 20, that's good. 20 and 30, that's very good. Above 30, that's excellent. And to extract the rating, I have to look at cell X1 and then use a VLOOKUP function to get the rating from this little table array. Let's do that. I'm going to type an equal sign in cell X2, then I'll type VLOOKUP, and then I hit tab. What's your lookup value? Whatever comes from the sum function X1, and then I hit comma. What's your table array? I'm selecting this entire table. I hit comma. I need a return value from the second column, column two, and then I hit comma. This is an approximate match because we don't have the same exact number in the left column of the table array. And to specify that this is an approximate match, I select true or I type one, and I close the bracket and then I hit enter. Right now, because I have 36 in X1, it's returning excellent. But you know, I'm using it to create a label so I'll put it in the edit mode one more time by hitting F2. And before the rating that was returned by the VLOOKUP function, I'm going to type in double quotes, you have, and a space, double quote, and then an end symbol, shift 7. And after the VLOOKUP function, another end symbol, shift 7. And in double quotation, I'll be typing space, general, knowledge. Of course, you will be customizing these labels according to the purpose of the questionnaire, the test, the quiz, the form that you are creating, so you can change the text as you like. We are explaining a general concept. When I hit enter, you have excellent general knowledge. These are the labels that will be displayed when I evaluate the result of the exam, when I check the score for each candidate. I also want to count how many correct answers, how many wrong answers, to use them for creating a chart. So in cell Y10, I'll be creating a count if function, equal count if, and then I hit tab. What would you like to count? I would like to count how many ones and zeros I have in column F. Where is the range that you want to count? I want to count the answers in column F. So I select the first cell F2, 
shift control down arrow f4 to lock it and jump back and then i hit comma my condition for the correct answer is number one i want to count how many ones do we have and then i hit enter now i want to copy this function down for the wrong answer i'm going to drag it from the autofill handle and i have the range locked but what i need to do is to put it in the edit mode and replace the one by a zero so i would have created my two functions that will be used for creating a donut chart. My next step will be creating some text boxes and a chart. To create a text box, I'll go to the Insert tab of the ribbon, and to the right side under Text, I select Text Box, and I click and drag to create a text box. I'll be typing some text, and then I'll be formatting that text. I typed some text. You have 40 questions to answer in 30 minutes. Of course, you can change the number of questions and the time allowed. Select the best answer from the drop list in column D. I want to format the text in this text box and hide the outline of the text box. I formatted the font in blue. I bolded the font and now I want to center it right and left and up and down. And I'm going to click on the shape format. And from here, for the shape outline, I don't want an outline, so I select no outline. I also don't want the text box to move when I put it in its final position. So I select the text box and then right click and select size and properties. The format shape pane opens on the right side. I expand properties and from here I select don't move or side with cells. So if you insert columns, if you expand or collapse a column, then the text box position will not change. I created my first text box. I want to create two more and a chart. So for the second text box, I click on the insert tab of the ribbon. I click on text, click on text box, and then I click and drag to position my text box. And here, what I would like to do is to link it to the cell having the score. So with the text box selected, I hit F2, type an equal sign in the formula bar and click on cell Z1. When I hit enter, I see the contents of cell Z1. I'm going to format this text box with the next one all in one go. I can copy the text box and modify it by pressing Ctrl and dragging. And here is a second text box. Now what I would like to do is to link it to the cell having the rating. So instead of having it linked to Z1, I'm going to delete Z1 and link it to cell X2 and then I hit enter. You have an excellent general knowledge. I need to format the two text boxes, so I press Ctrl to select both of them. I set the font to 20. I'm going to bold it and I'm going to change the color. I'll make it light blue. I want to center it right and left and up and down. And for the properties, I have the format shape open. Then under properties, I'll be selecting don't move or size. Don't forget, we don't need an outline. So I go to shape outline, shape format, and select no outline. I finished creating the three text boxes. I need to resize them and position them in their final position. We'll be taking care of that in more details later on, but because we have the intention of writing a code that reveals or hides the text boxes, then it's very important to name them properly. I select the first text box, and this one will be text box number one, and I'm deleting the space. So it's text box one without a space. It's not a requirement. That's simply to avoid the confusion. And then for the score, the one link to cell Z1, I want to name it text box 2 without a space. So in the name box, I change the number, delete the extra space, and make sure that this one is text box 2. And for the last one, this should be text box 3. So I'm changing the number, and I make it text box 3 without a space. I'll be using these names where I create my code that will show or hide the different text boxes. The final thing I want to do is to create a chart, and this is a very simple chart. It's a donut chart. Now I can close the format shape pane, 
and then I'm selecting these four cells. I'm selecting the range from X10 to Y11. To create a donut chart, I go to the Insert tab of the ribbon, and then I click on the down arrow for pie chart, and from here I'll be selecting a donut chart. I can do some changes in my donut chart, and I can add some details. I don't want a chart title, so I click on the Chart Element button, and I'll be taking the check away from chart title, and my chart will grow bigger. I also want a legend, but I want to move the legend to the top, so I click on legend, click on the right pointing triangle, and move it to the top. That's a better position. Let's click on the legend and increase its size, so I go to the Home tab and bump it up, let's say, to 12. I can bold it if I wish. Now I want to make some changes to my chart, so I click on the donut chart. I'm clicking on one of the series. It selects all the series, and I hit the shortcut Control-1. The Format Data Series pane opens. I want to reduce the size of this hole. So I drag the donut hole size, I drag it a little bit, and I want to add a style. I want to bevel this chart. So with my chart selected, I go to the Format tab, click on the down arrow for Shape Effect. I want to bevel my chart, and I'll be selecting any beveled option. The final thing, I want to read the percentage of wrong and correct answers. So I'll be adding some data labels. I check the box for data labels, and I click on the little triangle to the right, and then I want more data label options. So I click on more options, and from here for the data label options, I click on label options, and I want the percentage, uncheck value, and uncheck leader lines. Now I have the percentage of correct and wrong questions. I want to bump it up and make it white. So I go to the Home tab, I bump it up to 10.5. I want to bold it, and I want to make it white to improve the legibility of the labels. What I want to do right now is to get rid of the outer frame of the chart and give the correct name to my chart to use it in the code as well. So I click on the chart area, the outer frame of the chart, click on the Format tab, and here I'll be clicking on Shape Outline, and I don't want any outline. As we did before, with the chart selected, I go to the Format Chart area. If you closed it before, then hit Control-1 to reopen it, and when you click on the outer border, what we need to do is to go to the Properties. Here is Size and Properties, and under Properties, I select Don't Move or Size, because later on, we don't want it to move from its final position, and I close. The chart is still selected. I go to the name box, and I want to change the name to refer to it in my code. I'm going to name it Chart1, and then I hit Enter, and I finished this part of my project. After creating my chart and the three text boxes, formatting them and renaming them and adjusting their properties, I want to hide some columns and move these elements to their final position. So to do that, I'm going to navigate to the left side of my worksheet, select column F to L, and then right-click and Height. And I don't want the preparation area anymore, so I'm going to hide the columns from X to AB, and I right-click and Height. Now I'm ready to move my elements to the side to their final position. I cannot cut and paste because that will change the number of the text box. This is text box 1, and then I drag the text box to the left. I select the second text box, that's text box 2, and I want to position it, let's say, in this position, and then here is text box 3, and I position it like that. Although they are overlapping each other right now, but later on they won't be overlapping each other because it's either text box 1 or text boxes 2 and 3 that will appear at a time. I also want to move the chart, but unfortunately I don't see it at all. And the reason I don't see it, it's because that I'm hiding the source data. I definitely want to hide in my final project the source data, but I don't want the chart to be hidden. So I'm going to unhide the source data one more time by selecting column W and AC, right-click and unhide, 
so when I unhide the columns, it reveals the chart one more time. But what will happen when I rehide the columns? This is what I'm going to do. So I select the chart, go to the chart design, click on select data, and here I click in the lower left corner, hidden and empty cells. When I click on that, check the box, show data in hidden rows and columns. When I hit OK and another OK, now I can move my chart. And if I hide the same range one more time, now nothing will affect the chart. So I click on hide and here is my chart. Let's take a few seconds resizing and repositioning and putting everything in its final position. So I'm going to zoom out and then I'll be resizing some elements. Now after putting the text boxes in their best position, I want to get rid of the fill color for the chart and the two text boxes that overlap text box number one. I'm selecting text box two and text box three while pressing control, click on shape format, and then here I click on shape fill, no fill. And finally, I select the chart because the chart is overlapping the drop list. I don't want to see a fill color for my chart. I select the chart area and click on format, shape fill, and I don't want to fill, no fill. Now that's fine. My next step will be bringing two pictures. These two pictures will control the start of the test and revealing the score of the test. So let's bring two pictures. You can select any pictures of your choice. So I click on the insert tab of the ribbon. I click on pictures from this device. And then I want to bring these two pictures that I'll be using for triggering the codes. Let's take some time, resize and reposition the pictures. Now I want to create two codes. The third code can be optional. Code number one will be triggered when I click on this giant pen icon. It will reveal text box number one. Reading, you have 40 questions to answer in 30 minutes. Select the best answer from the drop list in column D. This is just to start the test. While the second code will be linked to the second picture, and this one will show the result and reveal the conditional formatting. But when I start the test, I don't want to see the conditional formatting. I want to turn off the conditional formatting. And remember, the conditional formatting is turned off by changing the number in cell XFD120. So let's create the first code. I'm going to switch to my Visual Basic Editor, Alt F11. In my Visual Basic Editor, I want to insert a module. So I can click on the Insert menu and select Module, and I can use the shortcut Alt-IM. Here, I'm going to start creating my first code. Any code starts by the keyword Sub, so I type Sub, Start Test. We are not allowed to have spaces in the name of the subroutine or macro. When I hit Enter, I'll be writing my code between the Sub and End Sub. I wrote my code. And this code is doing the following. Go to the range D2, D41, and remove any color. Delete the fill color, dot interior, dot color, equals XL none. So if I previously had some conditional formatting, I'm removing the color. If I previously applied any color, I'm removing that color. Then for the range from D2 to D41, I'm deleting the contents as if I'm hitting the delete key. I want to turn off the conditional formatting, so I go to the cell XFD1, range XFD1, and I clear the contents as if I'm hitting delete. Then we have three text boxes and one chart. For chart one, I want to set the visibility to false so I don't see it. Text box two and three. I don't want to see them. These are returning the score and rating. But I want to see text box 1, so I set the visibility to true, and I stop by selecting cell D2. I finished creating the first code. Let's go and create the second one. The second code is to reveal the results, so I'm going to give it a name, C results, sub C results. I hit enter. 
and between the sub and end sub I'll be writing my code. The second code C result will be linked to this quiz icon. It will reveal the conditional formatting because when I see the result, I want to see the correct answers in green and the wrong answers in red. It will hide text box number one for the instructions and it will display text box two, three, and the chart. Let's do that. I go to the Visual Basic Editor Alt F11. Between the sub and end sub, I'll be writing my code. I will make this code available in the description so that you can simply copy it and paste it. Here it says, if you have any color in the range D2, D41, remove this fill color. If the range XFD1 equals 1, that means we are revealing the formatting, then exit the sub. Otherwise, change the value in XFD1, make it 1. Hide column XFD entirely. And then for the shapes, hide text box number 1, but reveal the chart text box 2 and text box 3. That's simply my code. Now let's attach these codes and test. I'm going to close my Visual Basic Editor, select the giant pen, right click, assign macro. This one is to start the test, so I select Start Test and hit OK. I select the second picture, right click, assign macro, and this one is to see the result. I click on See Result and then hit OK. I deselect the two and then I want to test. So if I click on the pen, it hides the chart and the two other text boxes. It clears the contents of column D. Let me select some options. So I'll be selecting here an option. I'll be selecting a second option. I'll be selecting randomly. I'm not even reading the questions. In fact, I should be reading the question and trying to pick up the correct answer. So I'm picking up any option from the drop list because I'm simply explaining the functionality right now. I didn't answer all the questions, I just answered four of them and I want to check my results, so I click on quiz. Now look at this, conditional formatting pops up. Your score is two out of 40. That's a shame I should do better. You have fair general knowledge and here I get the percentage of correct and wrong results. When you look at the chart, it says 50% correct and 50% wrong because it's only looking at the four questions that I answered. So I do have two correct and two wrong questions. That's why my donut chart appears 50-50. Because I'm marking the quiz, I should be able to show the candidate the correct answers. So I want to create a third code that fills up column D with the correct answers with a single click. So let's do that. I'm going to add a little icon in the upper left corner. And for this little icon, I go to the Insert tab. I click on Icon. I can type a search term, let's say Teacher. And now I can select any icon. This icon will be used for triggering the third code that will fill the entire range in column D. So I'm going to resize my icon. I just want to position it here at the top. And then I go back to my Visual Basic Editor to create my third and last code. What does this code do? This code will be copying the contents from column L, having all the correct answers. Paste the values in this column and apply a green formatting. Before I go, I want to look at the green color to see the numbers. So if I click on the fill icon and look at this color, and then I click on the down pointing arrow for fill and select more colors, look at these numbers, 146, 208, and then 80, I have to use these numbers when creating my code. I hit OK, and let's go to the Visual Basic Editor. To go to the Visual Basic Editor, I hit Alt F11. I make some space after the end sub, and I'll be creating the last subroutine answer questions. I hit enter, and between the sub and end sub, I'll be writing my code. For this code, I'm declaring two variables. Both of them are ranges, 
I named the first variable answer range. I named the second one QST. You can name them whatever you like. I assigned the value to the answer question. I said it will be storing the range D2, D41. This is the range having the drop list. And then I'm going to loop over each cell in this range by using the for each next. For each QST in the answer range, for each cell in the range D2, D41, assign the value that you see eight columns to the right from D to L as if I'm moving eight columns. So offset 0, 0,8, that means I don't want to move any row up and down. I want to move eight columns to the right and grab the value. After doing this, I want to change the interior color, which means the fill color of the range D2, D41. I want the green color and I set the red, green and blue component to 146, 208 and 80 as I showed you a while ago. I finished creating my code. I want to go back to Excel and link it to the icon. I can close my Visual Basic Editor and now I'm back. So I right click on the icon and here I select Assign Macro and I want to select Answer Questions. Now I can test the three macros together. I click outside. Let's say I want to start the test. So I click on this one. It clears the entire range. You have 40 questions to answer in three minutes. Select the best answer from the drop list in column D. I don't want to answer it myself. I want to pick up the correct answer to show it to my candidates. I'm going to click on this icon in cell A1. It fills the entire range and it applies the formatting. I want to see the result, so I click on the quiz. And here I can see the result. It looks like there are two wrong answers and the percentage it's eight percent to 92 percent your score it looks there are more then i have three wrong answers because i changed them i changed the answers in three cells so i'm getting a score of 37 out of 40 you have excellent general knowledge thank you very much and my functionality is working the final thing i want to do is to prevent anyone from changing my code, is to prevent anyone from unhiding the columns that are currently hidden. Applying protection in Excel requires preparation. By default, all the cells in any Excel worksheet are locked. So if you want to allow the user to select a different option from the drop list in column D, then you need to unlock this range. And because also I'm changing in the code, the contents of cell XFD1 that triggers the conditional formatting, then I want to unlock this cell as well. Let's select the range from D2 down to D41. Control Shift down arrow, and then I open the Format Cell dialog box, Control 1. In the Format Cell dialog box, I go to the rightmost tab, Protection. I want this range to be unlocked, so if you have it locked, then take the check away. I hit OK. I go to cell XFD1. And in XFD1, I want to unlock it as well. So I hit Control 1 to open the Format Cell dialog box. In the Format Cell dialog box, I take the check away from locked. I don't want this cell to be locked so that I allow changing the value of this cell. I hit OK and I prepared for applying protection. Control Home to go back. And now I'm ready to apply protection by going to the Review tab. When I click on the Review tab, I want to prevent any change in the worksheet and in the workbook. When I click on Protect Workbook, now I can protect from changing the structure. No one can insert or delete a sheet. So I'll be typing a password, let's say 2020 and then I hit OK. I will have to confirm the password 2020 one more time, and then I hit OK. Now I want to protect the worksheet. So when I click on Protect Worksheet, look at that. It says Protect the Worksheet and Contents of Locked Cells. All the cells in the worksheet are locked, except the range D2, D41, and XFD1. These won't be protected, so you can type or change the values in this range. 
I don't want anyone to select the unlocked cells, so I take the check away. And then for the format columns, I check this one as well. I check the box for insert column and I check the box for delete column. The reason for this, in my code, I'm hiding column XFG. So for this functionality to work and the code to work properly without failing, then I have to enable these two options. Now I'll be typing a password. Let's use the same password 2020. I hit enter 2020. I hit enter and I would have protected my worksheet. The final thing I want to do is to prevent anyone from looking or modifying my code. So I go to the Visual Basic Editor, Alt F11, and then I'll be collapsing my module. So I click on the minus sign to the left side of the project name in the Project Explorer. When I collapse, anyone can come back and click on the plus sign and expand it. I want to prevent this. So I'll be right clicking on the project name, select VBA Project Properties. Here it has two tabs, the General tab and the Protection tab. I click on the Protection tab and I'll be typing a password. I'll be using the same password, but of course you can change it, 2020. And then to confirm the password, I'll be typing 2020 one more time. Now I hit OK. Note that if I click on the plus sign, it will expand as if I didn't apply protection because protection in the Visual Basic Editor becomes valid once you save, close, and reopen the file. I'm closing the Visual Basic Editor. If I save my file and then I reopen it, then no one will be able to expand my Visual Basic Editor. Now let's test. If I want to start my quiz, I click on the giant pen icon. It clears the contents of column D. It displays text box number one. It removes the fill color in column D. I'll be testing the code that answers all the questions instead of answering them one by one. Here it adds the answers. Now I want to mark my quiz and see the score. So if I click on quiz, now I get the score 37 out of 40 and you have excellent general knowledge. As I told you, I intentionally kept in column L three wrong answers so that I can see the red color for the wrong answers. You can definitely go to column L and change the answer to the correct one. Now, if I want to restart, I click on this icon and the functionality is fine. If you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.